Gotcha. What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here, and today we're talking about how to make your landscape photos better and get them to the next level using Lightroom and Photoshop and a couple tricks and tips along the way that, that take you from here to just absolute beast mode, okay? So, let's go! Chances are, if you bought a camera in the last 10 years, the last 10 minutes, you, at one point or are about to, go take some landscape photos. It's like the easiest thing, it's the most accessible thing to do right when you get a camera. Even to this day, you don't need help, you don't need a model, you don't need props or a tie, it's just there's no stress, you're at your own pace. It's just you, your camera, the wilderness, and you're just capturing earth. I get asked a lot, what's my process? What do I use? How do I take landscape photos? How do you get them to be so colorful and so sharp? And it's a combination of things, really. I always talk and preach that it's not about your gear and where I very much believe so. There are specific types of equipment that can help you take better landscape photos. A wide angle lens, a polarizer, a tripod, a remote, that kind of stuff definitely aids in getting better photos, better landscape photos. But then you get to pair that with programs like Lightroom and Photoshop and a little bit of knowledge and how to tweak your photos to pull the most out of them. Just like if you're cooking with certain ingredients, there's things you can do in the process to pull the most flavor out of whatever the ingredient is, right? To make that dish even better. So we're doing the same thing here with our landscape photos. Now chances are you go out, you blast off like thousands of photos, maybe hundreds of photos, whatever, and you scroll through them and you find the standout ones because the thumbnails look great. That's problem number one. There's a lot of good photos hidden in bad thumbnails. Sometimes you maybe just underexpose it a little bit. And if you're flying through those thumbnails, you miss it. So just make those thumbnails extra big so you can see them real, real nice. Import them into Lightroom and go through each of your photos one by one. This is the process that I do. I shoot raw and then I make a folder called raws and then I make a folder called full size and that's where all my edits are gonna go. I pull them all into Lightroom and once they're all imported, I go through them individually. At that point, I rate all the photos that I think are gonna be good and I wanna edit and come back to. By just hitting five, you five star that photo in Lightroom so that you know you can come back to it if you've got a whole bunch of photos to choose from. You can actually rate the photo right from the camera. So when you already get it into Lightroom, it's already rated and you know that was one that you thought, mmm, that's gonna be tasty when you were already out in the field. And then you know that when you get back in, you don't forget because let's be honest, these things can get overlooked really, really, really easily. So the main point to this is there are some great photos that you may be missing because you're just skimming through the thumbnails and thinking to yourself, nah, it's not good, it's not good. But if we were to just tweak the exposure a little bit and brighten that one up, that could be a great standout landscape photo, okay? So you wanna get a tripod because you want those shots to be steady, you want them to be crisp if it's a long exposure, if it's a waterfall, if it's a nighttime exposure. A tripod is something that is just imperative if you want epic landscape photos. Now you don't need it all the time. I really only use my tripod for landscape photos when I'm doing long exposures of water or something at night. But I handhold all kinds of landscape photos. All of these shots, they're all handheld wherever I was at the time. So you you don't need to have it. Another thing that is good to invest in is a polarizer. Polarizers are great filters to put on the end of your lens. They really help punch out certain colors in your photos because it's important to get it as close to perfect in camera before you get to editing. Really, really recommend it. If you can nail that photo in camera and get it as close as you can, when you get to the editing process, it's just gonna be way easier to edit. It's gonna need way less TLC and Lightroom and Photoshop, and you're just gonna end up with better results. That's not to say you can't save a really garbage photo from the camera and just make it better. I've done that before. I've gone through and I've seen photos that I'm like, oh! Ugh, let's just pretend that never even happened. And then I bring in the Lightroom and I'm like, you know what though? No, I'm gonna make this awesome. And I spend hours at it. Then I finally post it. My friends are like, dude, that photo is dope. How did you get like, that's incredible. And I'm like, do you wanna, do you wanna see the before? Actually, you know what? No, you don't get to see the before. So there are salvageable images that you can make incredible. Okay, but let's do what we can to make them the best we can straight out of camera. So once you've locked that down, we open them up in Lightroom. Like I said, you rate them. I use Lightroom a lot of the time for my basic changes, applications, I crop in Lightroom. I sometimes adjust the sharpness and the white balance and all that stuff because it is a raw file. And then I really use Photoshop for the manipulation aspect. If I think adding birds to a photo is gonna enhance it, 
that's what I'll do in Photoshop. If I want to change out the sky, if I want to make a reflection of the sky, completely remove a fence or like 600 people from a photo. Not that I don't think I've ever done that many people. That's ridiculous. But Lightroom's like the import, the tweak, generic color changes, like a little bit of the HSL, hue, saturation, luminance, that kind of stuff, white balance. And then Photoshop is more like it's time to swap some faces, put in a new sun or, you know, the, the intense stuff that can sometimes be very noticeable or subtle details that just really help make that image just a lot nicer. Now there's two schools of thought with this. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. A lot of people, the purists, if we will, are like, no, if you're using Photoshop and you're adding birds to an image, that's manipulation, that's not photography. And I don't really think there's a right or wrong answer to that. For me, they're all just tools at my disposal to use and have fun with to get the best type of art that I wanna to present to the world. And it's my art, they're my images, and I do what I want to them. So if I think it looks good, it's going in. Do whatever you want. If you're one of the people who are like, don't ever add anything, then don't. Don't ever add anything and just carry on because it, it it doesn't matter. Because believe it or not, a lot of people don't edit their photos. And if they do edit their photos, all they're really doing sometimes is adjusting the brightness, a little bit of contrast. Maybe they throw like a, a sepia filter on there or something like that. But you'd be surprised the amount of people that send me iPhone shots and then like I'll run it through Snapseed and a bunch of stuff real fast and shoot it back, which is probably super obnoxious to everybody. And then they'll be like, wow, how did you get it to look so good? And it's like, I just edited it. I just edited the photo. That is. That is all I did. All right, so let's import some photos into Lightroom, start editing, and then we'll get those over to Photoshop and tweak them a little bit more. Time for some laptop club. Let's go. I've imported a photo here from the Italian Dolomites, which is just a fancy way of saying the Alps, the Italian Alps. Now, I didn't have this on a tripod. This was just handheld. I snapped it real quick, but it's a good example of me trying to expose it as best as I could in camera before getting it into post, which means I got a little more play with it when I'm editing. So first things first, here's what it looks like before and here's what it looks like after my edits. Now I'm on a bit of like a color kick right now. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll notice my grid is very colorful at the moment. So I really dig the blues in this because it makes it feel cold. It makes it feel like it was on the day that I was there, which was freezing. Pro tip, if you want to toggle between before and after edits, if you're on a Mac, uh, right below your delete key, the uh, slash button, you just hit that, that's before and after. And blew my mind to pieces when I learned that. It took me way too long to figure that out. Uh, as well, additionally, if I may, if you hit Y, it shows you a side-by-side -side comparison of before and after. Hit Y again, we're back. So how do we get this photo? Let's go ahead and hit reset. It's honestly just using the, the creative control tabs on the right side. I look at this and I say to myself, it needs to be a bit brighter. So I always start by bringing the shadows up, which reveal a lot of the details. So if we go here and bring those up, that exposes the brick in the forefront a bit more, the shed on the left side here, but it washes the image out a bit. So we need to counter that by dropping the blacks and playing with the curve line a little bit. So because that's washed out now, if we bring the blacks down, it gives us a little more contrast, which we can also toggle using the, uh, the contrast slider here. And then I'm gonna bring the highlights down to preserve some of that detail in the sky. So if we zoom in, you can see the sky here. And now if we drop those highlights, we get those details back. Now you can't always get them back because if you blow out the sky when you're shooting, it's a lot harder to recover that. So that's what I mean by trying to get the picture as close and as best you can get it out of camera so that when you're editing, you're left with an easier, just better result. Okay, so we've dropped those highlights. Uh, clarity, clarity's awesome now. There's, there's a point where you've just gone way too far with it. Sometimes I've crossed that myself, but I don't like to go too far with it because it kind of sucks the color out of the image. So just a little bit, and then I count it out with a little bit of vibrance to put that color back and we are back on track. So it's looking pretty good. Now I come down to the uh, the curves bar. The curves bar, if you notice, we got the highlights at the top, the mid-tones and the shadows at the bottom. So if we drop those highlights at the top, you'll notice it makes the sky a little bit darker. So I drop those a little bit and then I like to lift the blacks to make it look a little bit more vintage. Then I drop an anchor right above it and bring it back down to just kind of even it out because I don't want it to be too vintage that I put something in the middle to balance it right about there. Now I want this to exude the feeling that I felt when I was there, which was freezing. So I'm gonna drop the blue tone a little bit there and make it a little bit colder because blue is a great color if you wanna make something feel like nighttime or you wanna make something feel like it's cold, uh, perfect for that. So if we just bring the exposure up a little bit, a little more contrast there, that is looking good. We drop this black point can drop this black point a little bit more right about there good 
Now we come down to HSL, which is hue, saturation, and luminance. So if we come over to the color tab here, I can change the type of blue this is. So uh, we come over to the left, it's a little more turquoise and green, a little to the right, it's a little more um, magenta and purple. So I wanna keep it right about where it is. I was happy with it, almost center. The saturation part of that is gonna be the intensity of the color blue. I don't want it to be too intense. I'm actually gonna drop it a little bit because I don't want it to look like I've just put a giant blue filter on it. But if I drop it, it brings out like the, the white of the mountains a bit more and makes it feel cold without being like, hey guys, this is, this is blue. And then luminance is the brightness of the saturation and all those things uh, combined. So I, I bring that up a little bit just to make it feel crisp. And then down further under the uh, lens corrections tab, each photo that you take has metadata inside it. Like all the information that pertains to the settings, the camera, the lens that was used. So when you enable profile corrections, it knows that I shot this with a 24 mil. So it puts the proper settings onto this photo to get rid of the warp, to get rid of that vignette, which is like a dark halo around the edges. By enabling profile corrections, it makes it the way it should be specifically pertaining to the lens that you shot with. So make sure you do that. That's great. And you can adjust the vignetting down here on the side if you need to. And then I just do a little bit of a, a little bit of sharpening from that point on. And if we go back to before and after, it looks a lot better. Maybe a little more blue since I took some of that away, which is nice and subtle right about there. And then there you have it. That is after. And if we look at them side by side, I'm pretty happy with that. It's not too intense, but that's typically my workflow when it comes to editing photos in Lightroom. From this point, you just go up to File, Export, and you make sure that down here, quality is set to 100 on Adobe RGB, and then you just export it to the desktop, and you're pretty much set. And when it comes to Photoshop, like I said, I just use it for extra enhancements. So here's a picture of the New York skyline taken from the Rockefeller Center, looking at the Empire State Building. So great shot, I love this shot, but if I wanted to just make it a little more special, a little more unique to me, because this is how I like to edit my photos, I might add some birds in. Stuff like birds or hot air balloons or smoke and mist, different flashes of lights and lens flares and airplanes, all these little details that I can add to images wherever they fit really nicely, just bring out like a really subtle enhancement to your work that makes it feel like that timing was impeccable or it just brings like a little bit of next level feel to your images, okay? So in this instance, we're gonna use some birds. Now I just found these on Shutterstock. You can probably Google like isolated birds, PNG or something. I bought this image specifically because I've used it a few times. So we're gonna Command A, Command C, and then we're gonna Command V to paste those birds on top of our image. Now, first things we're gonna do is Command T to make that uh, bring up the sizing box. We're gonna hold Shift and drag in and make those birds a little bit smaller. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna change the blending mode to darken, that's gonna get rid of all of the white around it. Now you could say, okay, we're done, birds are in. Problem is the birds are a little too big for how far the Empire State is. So when you're doing this kind of thing, you wanna make sure that the perspective is accurate. Let's shrink those a little bit more. We can zoom out, see how they look. I think they're still a little bit too big, to be honest. Um, they look like half the size of the building. We wanna make sure they look like birds, and if there was actually birds flying around the top, they would probably be pretty small, especially from the distance that we're shooting this photo from. So that looks about good. Let's just say, for instance, that's where it is. If we want to get rid of a few, we can just hit E for eraser and then make sure that is the proper size and then we can just erase a few of these. Done. Now let's zoom out and take a look. It looks pretty good. It's a little hard to see. So maybe making it a bit bigger. And a lot of times this is what it is. It's tweaking it back and forth, back and forth to get the best possible result. Okay, whatever, just for the sake of this tutorial, let's say I'm happy with that. The problem is though, they're too dark for how washed out the image is. So we can fix that easily by going up to image adjustments, hue saturation, and making the birds lighter. So we're taking away some of that darkness. So if we make them a little bit lighter, you can see we're kind of making them look a little more washed out, which makes them look like they're in the distance. Now we could put some motion blur on these birds as well because they're moving. However, if you think about a shutter speed outside, mm, it's very possible to catch those birds mid motion, which would stop them completely with no image blur. Let's say it's right about there. Now, if I wanted to post this on Instagram, you probably wanna crop it a little bit more vertically. So you'd frame that Empire State so it was almost right in the center. We can image, crop that. And then now if we hit F for preview and F again, it isolates that photo. 
that's what we're looking at. It's a subtle detail, but it just adds a really nice element to the photo that it was missing before. So that's optional. Not everybody likes to do that kind of thing. I do. I think, you know, art, like I said a million times, is subjective. If you like it, that's what matters, okay? Okay, so that is it for me today, guys. I hope you guys got something out of this video. If you did, smash that like button. Give me some love. Subscribe if you aren't already. You can hit the bell if you want to be notified each time I upload. I try to get these types of videos out as often as I can. Vlogs, tutorials, just random nonsense. But I appreciate you guys checking me out, watching this video. And, and I will see you guys in the next video.